Let's listen to the play by play day by day. What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not ask why. And today we have a great one for y'all because we are joined by a true entrepreneur, the owner of Hood Rich Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Kim. What to do? What's going on? How y'all doing? They are good. I'm good. You good. We well, good. How you doing? Should I say? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thanks for pulling up. You know what I mean? Thanks for uh, making this happen. I feel like we're going to get a lot of gems out of this one. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you having me. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've done my research on you and get involved in many fields. Yeah. That's why I said a true entrepreneur. So we're going to get straight to it. I'm going to let you break it down. First and foremost, uh, your main brand, um, Hood Rich. Yeah. Hood Rich Clothing. Hood Rich Clothing. What is it and where did it come from? Um, it started with just 50 t-shirts. Um, hood Rich, well, my definition for Hood Rich is not knowing where you come from, but not letting it determine where you're going or where you can go. Mm -hmm. So anybody, you, you know, the rash, the riches story, we can start with nothing and make it to something. We all know that. But it's about the certain group of people that's determined to do that. Mm -hmm. There's people that know they started with nothing and they going to use the tools in life to make it to something. So when you put the hood rich on or you throw the clothes on, it just get you ready for the day, put you in that mood to get some money and just let you feel good. You don't got to have a million dollars to feel rich or look rich. Mm -hmm. It's about your mind state and kind of really how you present yourself. So with print, putting on the hood rich brand, it just gets you, you know, get you in that mood to go out here and just take over the world. So that's how I look at it. I started with just 50 t-shirts um, back in 2016 with just, you know, like $225. Yeah. They they sold out. I put them on Facebook. They sold their first couple of days, and I just kept going with it. I go on Amazon, order some shorts or, you know, anything I can put my logo on it. Started making stuff inside the living room and just, you know, graduated to a physical store in 2018, and, you know, we're here today. Nice, nice. The physical store, where's that located at? It's located in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's like 618 North English Street in Greensboro. Okay, nice. So you started with 50 t-shirts? Yep, just 50 t-shirts. 50 t-shirts. So what made you even want to get into the clothing to begin with? Um, I had went on a trip to Hawaii. I had been, it's probably like my first time going, well, I couldn't, I didn't have a passport at the time, but it was my first time going somewhere, you know, other than Miami or, yeah. you know, the usual little spots, yeah, the yeah. first couple spots that people go and they right. kind of get on the plane and start traveling. So when I went to Hawaii, we was on the boat and the man, you know, he asked me like, what, what you do? Mm -hmm. And it messed me up because I didn't really, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. had nothing going on at the time. Yeah. And I didn't have no comeback or no answer or nothing. So that's what just like a life check. It was like a reality check or something. I was like 25, just trying to figure out what was the next step in my life. And I've right. always been into clothes, like just fashion, period. Growing up, I always wanted the shoes. I would literally mop, clean, whatever I needed to do around the house to make sure that my mom was going to buy me these new shoes the mm -hmm. next week. So okay. i yeah, always you, been you, into it. So Yeah, because you got that shit on right now. Yeah, appreciate those that. The, okay, those are mochas, right? Mocha yeah, ones? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Don't you know how I used to work at Foot Locker? I know a little <laughs> bit about sneakers, just yeah, a little bit. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. So... What made you, so when he asked, what did you do right then and there, it hit you like, okay, so what made you choose to go the entrepreneur route right there instead of? Um, look at my mom. My mom always been an entrepreneur, so she had a business um, like a couple years before I had kind of got on, got out on my own. I was living with her. She had a restaurant called Yellow Dog for about three years. So my mom always kind of been, you know, a good figure to look at and kind of mm -hmm. watching her. She had the money and she was either going to buy a car or the restaurant and she ended up getting the restaurant. So that me watching her make the decisions that she made with her money and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, seeing what she did was really the inspiration to know exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I didn't want to work for nobody and I knew that I could sell. I'm a good salesperson. Whatever I get into my hands, I can mm -hmm. sell it. And, and clothes were just like the main thing. I seen a couple of people other than the, in the city that had, you know, T-shirts and was doing their thing. So I right. thought about, you know, I could maybe do that too. Yeah. So clothes is just something fast. Fashion is something I always been into. So I knew when I knew I always wanted a store too. Like whether it was a gas station, convenience store, like that's always been a goal of mine. Whether it was a business period, like a mm -hmm. building, I ain't even care if a I, brick and mortar. Yeah, that I you just own. really wanted a physical yeah. building. Before I spent any big money on any more trips or some mm -hmm. jewelry or anything, I was gonna put that into a business. Like I always just wanted a business. So just watching my mom and seeing her do it, wanting to do the same thing she did. That's dope. So how long again? I'm again. How long was the gap between when you first sold the fifty shirts and between when you got the actual clothing store? Two years. So I started in 2016, late 16, like October is when I first got the shirts, uh -huh. and then um, 
I opened up the doors 2018, like May, May the 1st, 2018. I got the building April the 19th, and in May I opened it up with not, with not even nothing in it. Like, hey. Couple t shirt like we yeah. were looking at the picture the other day, and it's like, bro, we literally, yeah. compared to where it's at uh-huh. now, it's like, I didn't even have a cash register on the first day. Yeah. And I was just laughing, like, what you was going to ring? <laughs> I was just so determined, like, yeah. just get the doors open. Like, I went and bought all the cases. I probably had a couple cigars, mm-hmm. two pack of, two, I had two bottles of Newports and some um, Marlboros. Okay. Them only cigarettes that I even bought. So I ain't even have all the cigarettes to start out with, but. I was determined to open up. I was going to open up. I used all the money I made mm-hmm. writing down what people wanted and went and bought it the next day or whatever. Took every dollar I made, put it back into the store. So it literally took just them two years for me to get the actual building. Okay. So what was that grind like during those two years? Like what were some moments that really like stood out like, okay, this is like either this is tough or this is sweet. I'm pretty sure it was tough. Nothing worth getting is sweet for real, yeah. for real. So like during those two years, like what was that What was that whole journey like? Um, I really kind of, about 2017, I low-key gave up, but I was really mm-hmm. doing custom T-shirts too. Okay. So that was I'm actually bringing an extra little bit more extra revenue. I'm the type of person that ain't going to kind of depend on one thing. Mm-hmm. So I knew that my brand was straight, but I might not make a sale every single day. But when I bought the equipment and started posting the equipment, uh, somebody had passed away and they automatically thought I did custom t-shirts, but I didn't. Uh-huh. But that made me learn to do custom t-shirts. I'm like, this another revenue. This mm-hmm. will keep the bills paid every day. I get a big order. I get a you know two, three t-shirt order. Yeah. So I started presenting like that. That really helped me build up at least a lot of clientele. So when they got a t-shirt made, they would buy a t-shirt, one of my t-shirts mm-hmm. or something like that. So, and I would be selling out the trunk, pulling up on people, but I kind of got discouraged. Like, dang, do you really want to make t-shirts? You know how you get yeah. into that little phase. Like, is this really what I want to do? Oh, yeah. But people kept calling. So I ain't type of person is going to leave some money on the table. So it's like, Can't do that. you know, I, mm-hmm. you got to do it do it all. So I kind of, you know, put it into my put it into my life. And by being in the house and in the living room, I ain't had to go nowhere. It really was there when I woke up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I couldn't kind of run from it. So I would go right in the living room. And I didn't have nowhere else to go to because I had some, you know, other situations going on outside. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So in the house is kind of where I needed to be. It kind of set me down. Yeah. Like God set me down. So when he set me down, it gave my focus to put solely on the t-shirts and solely on the business mm. so by me coming into that little hiccup outside in like the real world and me having to sit down for a minute it really just you know made me lock in you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. so that's when i really just took off and when when i you know back in when 2018 came i started looking for buildings and i said i'm gonna just try with a building and see how it go i found the cheap i found the cheapest building like my rent was literally like 500 oh, that's and sweet. i'm like yeah i definitely can yeah. afford this Hell yeah. with me thinking again i'm like i don't want to depend on just the clothes and the t-shirts uh-huh. i want to be a profit i don't want to just make bills or like let me get 200 dollars to pay my rent you know what i'm saying right. so i thought about the tobacco and the, you know an everyday product i'm like people smoke every day they gonna mm-hmm. come you know what i'm saying buy at least one cigar or something from yeah. me every day if i don't sell a t-shirt so just me being able to just you know just think outside the box and not wanting to fail i knew if i had more three at least three revenues coming through that door the custom t-shirts my probably my brand and then the tobacco mm-hmm. there's no way i could fail yeah, and all three of those are in the Hoodrich shop mm-hmm. now. That's dope. That's dope. You ain't just stick with one. You you got all of them in there. Yeah. So um, let me ask, which one would you say is like the higher, uh, which one drives some more revenue between? Uh, probably definitely the smoke shop. But yeah. the clothes too, though, like it definitely balances itself out. Like yeah. I don't think one would be, you know, good without, I couldn't take one away, like. When I got the building beside me became available, mm-hmm. and um, I had put a post up like, "What do y'all think this is gonna be? Which I think I'm gonna open next." Yeah. And I was trying to get my landlord to let me knock the wall down so I could expand, right. put more clothes in there, and then put the um, malt lick and start selling. You know what I'm saying? Other yeah. products to help, but for sales, but you know, I, they he wasn't going for yeah. it. You know, he ain't not one icon, so he wasn't going for. It. He kind of really gave me a hard time. But the building was already like a um, salon, so I just kept it as that, so I didn't have to. You know, really put too much money into it. Just buy the stuff and just put it in there. But my whole goal was to like really, you know, expand and and do this, do the whole store thing. But by my landlord not letting me do it and kind of really go the way I wanted to go, I just went a whole different route. So that's how I get into other fields. If one way don't work, you know, I'm yeah. gonna keep the wheels turning. So. Yeah, yeah. You never know. You may think it's a door closing. It might be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you going to another door, yeah. the right door that'll open up. So you bought the building next door. Yeah, I'm renting that too. Okay, so and you said that's a the it's head. a barbershop in a salon, so that's how I got into like the little hair. It was already a salon, 
but she had took you know all her stuff out. Uh-huh. It already had the plumbing and stuff. So instead of me having to, you know, yeah. put any extra money, just real money it. into it, yeah. I just um, and that's around the time until PPP loans was going around. I didn't get the PPP loan. I got one of the other little loans, mm-hmm. and I just bought that, put that all into the business. Like yeah. I wasn't about to use that money and right. trick it off. It was free. I ain't had to pay for it. a lot right. of people. You know, did stupid yeah, stuff about, yeah. you know they what I'm saying? The fuck out they was PPP going crazy. Loan. And I didn't even get, like, I got denied for the PPP. And it was, I was, had so much going on at the time, I didn't even look into why I got denied. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I could have probably, they boy, wanted another paperwork or something. But Do you know why you were denied? No, I still didn't even look like, mm-hmm. I don't even, I ain't even, you, you know, got I probably the other couldn't, one I could have like answered. No, I got the other one later on. Okay. But I was so focused on just, I was in Atlanta at the time trying mm-hmm. to build a brand up in Atlanta. So yeah. I just kind of wasn't focused on it too. And then that was around in 2020. We had a good year 2020. And I'm not like, I ain't want to be greedy. Like, I ain't like I didn't. Needed, I could have took it and wanted it, but yeah. when I got denied, it was like, okay, all right, yeah. cool. And you I didn't want to pay. I ain't it. know if it was a payback, and I ain't. I was kind of scared. You know, a lot yeah. of people were scared. Yeah, and I was one of them scared before <laughs> I really had a business and everything too. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not about to risk nothing that's gonna probably, you know, kind of bite me an ass at the end. Yeah. And everybody was like, well, let me fill it out and let me, you know, do oh, your yeah. paperwork. And I'm oh, like, yeah. nah. I got, I got some homeboys that was running. <laughs> but I that did shit. turn around and get that little 15, so I was yeah. straight. Like yeah. I was happy. You know, I was right. I ain't no greedy person. They got all. I mean, my mom always told me don't take something you don't need. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you yeah. offer me, you know, some shoes and I don't need no shoes, I got plenty of shoes. Yeah. I ain't about to, you know, take the shoes. You know, right. I'm that type of person. So I just didn't want to, um, I don't know. I just wanted to overdo it. We had a real, like, that's probably one of the best years I ever had, 2020, because the Joy Floyd situation went on. Everybody was supporting black businesses then. Mm-hmm. Like, they yeah. were shopping. Yeah. Oh, so I was okay. more blessed for that. You know, that oh. I had so much, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. to take a little something. Yeah, like, I wish I would have took it now, but, yeah. you know, I feel like I was already doing so good that year, right. so I didn't really need it to what the other people that, you know, was yeah. grabbing and needing. So even my grandma was like, get there, you know, fill it out. She didn't really not even fill out the application. When I got denied, it's just like, you, I, was like, I was just so focused on everything else that was coming in. I had yeah. a real good flow that year, so I'm like, but I you wasn't was impressed by thinking it. about, yeah, mm-hmm. but I, still, I got a little something out of it, so I'm blessed. I ain't tripping, but yeah, yeah. I wish they, it would come back around, because I ain't scared no more. Man, what? <laughs> I said that. I've been saying that for like the past two years. I'm like, damn, I should have took that PPP man. loan. And I, I I think I start I started a I started my LLC like right before COVID and all that even happened. So I might have even been straight. Right. Man, the, the people that got it. And yo, the people that what? we see, like, especially when they dropped that little list with them yeah. names and them addresses uh-huh. on there, yeah. them companies that was made up. So when I seen yeah. the people that I know, and I'm like, such and such guy, what? I feel my oh yeah, I was a little, yeah. I was a little high. That's what really made me high. Like, feel dang, and I got, I'm out here working hard. I got right, a real business. Right, feel my. Oh yeah, COVID was definitely that time of like people that didn't have shit going <laughs> on was living the absolute best life. Yeah, they was though. Ooh, but that they, shit they was, was crazy. Though, but I ain't tripping. They, hey, but they, they, though. hey, the Fed's running down now. I yeah, seen. they ain't doing too good now. Yeah, either. Three, like, you yeah, see that right. same, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, then yeah. they kind of mess with your, mess with your hustle. You get that little quick money. Yeah. So many people, you know, quit their job. They ain't kind of, uh-huh. their money kind of really messed their head up. Oh yeah, quick, you know easy money. Saying? Yeah, it and definitely. that's another reason why I didn't want to, you know, kind of, I don't know, like, I don't know what kind of space I was in. Like, why did and I'm like, nah, I ain't, I don't know why I was like, I ain't need it. I don't know. I can't remember like what space I was in, but I know I tried to get it and I know I got denied. Mm-hmm. But the second one, I got denied too, but I stayed, I, I filled up on the asking what, you know, she's yeah. like, nah, just you filled out, just answer this question wrong, so let me right. go back and do it. Yeah. But I was so caught up, bro. I was in Atlanta living, bro. Like I'm telling you, I had met a girl, all type of stuff. So I was like, I was, you know, focused, but wasn't focused. Yeah. Like, there was so much money at that time coming in the store. I really wasn't like, I ain't going to. You know, if I needed a PPP, yeah, but I kind of honestly didn't need it, so. And it's easy, like, when you get quick, easy, fast money, it's easy to take it for granted. Yeah. And I, like, similar to you, like, during the whole COVID thing, like, I could have got imp- unemployment. Right. Um, Of course, I got them, uh, what were them shits called? Um, them shits Trump was dropping. Yeah, them the stimulus. Stems, yeah, definitely got, I ain't, listen, I ain't, I ain't turned even che- I don't even, I never got a stimulus, neither. I ain't even never check if I could have even got it. Sure. You crazy, might, you right? might, yeah, you might got a little something waiting I for I know, me, right? You know and it's like, mean? dang, like, I ain't, I don't know. That's, I got it, I don't know. Yeah, I, I ain't, I ain't, pa- I ain't pass up on a stem now. I know, that's crazy. I should have got that one. I got checked. Yeah, I was on it about them stems, I but Trump. See, but he got that in. yeah, <laughs> well, you can't call him right now. Was he out? Is he still? Yeah, he, he out. He, 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 no, he got out about <laughs> ten minutes. Trump bad. Yeah, he right. Bad. I'm like, he come on, bro. Y'all think that nigga Ray staying there? Come on, man. People celebrating. What you think about that case though? Like, you think he will do time or? 
Hell no. Money talks when it comes to shit like that. If he, they'll probably give him some type of probation or something out there. I didn't I even know that he, that, like, people so focused on that case. He got three or four other cases. Oh, yeah. That's not even the only case. And it's, and it's, like, this has been the, this has been, like, you know, something that's been brought up with him. Like, he's always had some type of, you know, legal action going on, but. I mean, he can literally buy the best lawyers. Right. You know what I mean? And plus, money and power. Right. You know what I mean? The dude got money and power. It's hard to put somebody like that behind the walls. Like, uh, I think they'll give him something. They'll they'll try to spice it up to make it sound good. But at the end of the day, behind closed doors, I don't think it'll be nothing serious. You know what I mean? But, yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you mentioned you was in Atlanta. How long was you in Atlanta for? Um, I still be. I still in Atlanta. I was living there for about two years, but I came back because my employee had quit. So mm. I had to, you know, get the shop back together a lot okay. back in. Like I say, God will sit me down yeah. quick. I feel like that'd be him. So I listen. Like when he say when something happened, I feel like that'd be, you know, lock in, sit mm -hmm. down, reset time. And it happens in my life kind of a lot. So I try to, you know, listen and listen to them signs. But I was down there for about two years, putting up billboards, just working, trying to get the brand out there. And I did good. I done met a lot of people. Like, I'm like, I got a good circle down there in Atlanta. Yeah. So I um, got a building down there in Atlanta. Like, I got a business. I got a store in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I got all the stuff in and everything. Is it another Hubbard a, store? Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing that I got here. Okay. But the landlord, he kind of had um got sick. And was kind of like, you know, let him get his stuff together. And that was mm -hmm. kind of helping me out too far as they wasn't charging me for the rent. I could come back and get North Carolina together. Yeah. And then still go there and, you oh, know, yeah, pick sweet. back up where I left off. So yeah. that's my goal to have that open by 2024. Like physically grand open, have a family come down there and do the whole. And, you, and it'll be like the same mm -hmm. like inventory? The same setup. Okay. Yeah, clothes in, in the same setup down there. Got you. So I'm fairly new to like the, the South area, if you would. I'm from Maryland. I've been in Charlotte for two years now. Yeah. Before I moved to Charlotte, I was considering Charlotte. Or Atlanta, one of the two. I ended up picking Charlotte just because it's a little closer to home. Right. And, you know what I'm saying, just doing my research, it's a little slower than Atlanta. I wanted to start off something a little slower, yeah, more yeah, chill. Yeah. So, um, and I would hear, at, you know, about Atlanta, I would hear, like, the networking is good. Like, if you getting your hustle on, it's the Black Hollywood, it's the Black Wall Street. What is the vibes of Atlanta? Is it really like the, like, the it place yeah. for like black entrepreneurs or move makers just in general like yeah. what is it like yeah it is it's like yeah. especially if you get around the right people mm. you know what i'm saying it's like it's not hard to get around the right people too because think about atlanta is they like especially because i kind of went because i kind of already did the off the porch so mm -hmm. i kind of already had a little name like like a okay. little buzz or somebody kind of even knew me and then the yeah. people that was kind of vouching for me too like the, the key people that I kind of came in with was like, yeah, this somebody that's, mm. you know what I'm saying, yeah. been doing it, got this, got that. So that kind of really helped me out a lot too. But like I say, Atlanta is like, it's, it's on you to get out there and, and make it happen and, you know, not make yourself look like a fool. But if right. you get around the right people and get around the right rooms, is you gonna make it do what it do, especially if you got that hustle in you. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people around you that's hustling just as hard as you, right. and it's gonna make you wanna get up and, you know yeah. what I'm saying, do it. Like me being in Atlanta, me seeing what they got, people way younger than me, just driving and seeing the water boys running up on you with the water is mm -hmm. motivation. It's yeah. like, this nigga is eight. You know what I'm saying? When you when you pull off and you gave Miss Dollar and he pulled that wallet out, it's probably bigger than the wallet that I got in my yeah. pocket right now. Right. That's motivated. Like, you know what I'm saying? They starting at that age. Where mm -hmm. here, you know, you probably get some money when you fight, when you graduate, the money that your family gave yeah. you, the little first job you get. Well, it's like, no, they already instilled. It's already instilled in them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that it, it just gives you the motivation to just want some money too. Like mm -hmm. what they drive in the cars that ride past you. Yeah. And it's people that look like you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nobody that yeah. That's regular and then like these people look just like you. Like, so they right, make cool. you that's, like, oh yeah. That's my how they say twin out there, be like, okay, that yeah, really is my twin. That's my stars. people. So I yeah. gotta I gotta step it the stars up. Stars is right there and they treat the stars just like regular people. And like yeah. they fanning out when when Quavo walk in or something. Right. Like it's the same, you know what I'm saying? They treat yeah. everybody the same. So it's like it's a real good vibe and it may just makes you wanna feel that don't motivate you and make you wanna mm -hmm. get some money. Yeah. You kinda really ain't a hustler. But mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's that vibe, it's that that or it's seeing it's you seeing what you see on Instagram mm -hmm. right there in your face. It's like, oh yeah, this real, like Atlanta real. Mm -hmm. Like it's really, really real. Like for real. I, I and know you would get cussed out. Like you so say you get cussed out. It's like, yeah, it's it's real. Like yeah. that that'll make you feel like, yeah, this Mm -hmm. this, this it for real. Like, I know someone who was out there not too long ago, um, a friend of mine. 
I don't think he necessarily has like the entrepreneurial hustle spirit as right. much. And I say that because like I'm like, yo, he was in Atlanta. I know it was hard. He came back. He said, bro, Atlanta chewed me up and spit me out. I'm like, bro, what do you mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he must got you. Let's let them girls take him down. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. He said he all his money would go towards tricking off pretty much. I'm yeah, like, nah, yeah, you can't bro, get it. That's the thing nah, right bro. there. Like I, I got with a girl down there in Atlanta and. It's like, she motivated me to get some money too. It's like, I don't know, crazy stuff motivate me, but it's like, if you want to be with these type of, with these people and around these girls and keep up, you go get it. you some money. Yeah, you see you what I'm saying? If she it. expecting flowers and you got to buy flowers, yeah. you need to be getting some money to get some flowers. Yeah. You can't let it, you know what I'm saying, get you in the mind state like that. Mm -hmm. So if you get with a girl, because they, they going to drain you. Yeah, like they gonna you drain you, but they gonna said. ask for the the, the, the top, and they kind of yeah, uh -huh. expect that because that's what they're already getting. Yeah. So it's like don't get around, don't even get yourself into that if yeah. that's not what you want. Like right. them Atlanta girls is already out for that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. you think city girl, like that is they've been on that before that whole wave of city girls. They yeah. is born straight, not not even leech. It's not even that, they, and they don't even do it in a bad way or make yeah, you feel like you getting used. What they and it's like that's to. just what. Yeah. They require, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They giving themselves that. It ain't like they not giving themselves that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like I see if the girl I ain't already got twenty bags in her. You know what I'm saying? Like and that's a separating. So factor. that's the separating the fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They already got that. So they yeah. be trying to explain to females like it's a different caliber female. Like mm -hmm. certain females require a certain, you know what I'm saying? A yeah. certain taste. So if you yeah. ain't kind of kicking it like that, then you need to. Kind of stay away from that, especially right. them bad ones. If you're chasing that whole bad thing mm -hmm. and the look and all of that appearance, the all of that, yeah. you got to kick. And if you uh -huh. ain't got it, just stay away. Cause yeah. there's some dudes out there that they they got it. Well, like Atlanta nothing. got it, so they they looking for them. If you ain't one of them, just leave them alone. Don't keep trying to pursue that. You know right. what I'm saying? Cause they gonna get it out to you. Yeah. You ain't got nothing and left, done. and Bone go right dry. to the next one. They already got the next one. They say it ain't tricking if you got it. Yeah, it ain't. So. I, 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 me personally, I say it's still tricking. You just got it, and it just don't do nothing to you. So when you when you had like your situation in Atlanta, or just girls in general, like yeah. in Atlanta, like what the type of you? Like if you have it, like are you gonna give it to them, or are you kind of yeah, like horrible? <laughs> I'm horrible. So that's why I was like, yeah, I got to get get up and get some money. You going back to NC and, yeah. and get. That's why I say God to hit me here. He'll get mm. me right, right on time. But yeah, I ain't going to lie. I got I got caught up in it. Yeah. I got caught up in it. I can't lie. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, though. It's like, you know, it, 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 it it's cool. It's like you just can't get too caught up in it. But mm -hmm. you got to know when, when it turned down. A lot of people don't know when to. When to say no, or when yeah. to, you know what I'm saying, like it ain't because they'll put it on you hard, so you gotta mm -hmm. just know when to draw the line. My problem is, I'm cheap and I say no too much, yeah. But with that being said, I say no, but like it never, it never, like even though I'm cheap and I stay no, eventually, just for the vibe's sake, it still comes around at some point, maybe right. not as often if I were to really be out there and try to move, but at some point. Just to catch the vibe, though, come around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every hand that. Yeah. It's not as often as if I was really but applying pressure. But you ain't pressure. chasing it, though. You see what I'm saying? So uh -uh. that's the difference. Nah, There's a nah, lot of nah. people that's chasing. They want that in their driver's yeah. passenger seat. It's like, yeah. if you're going to pick that up, why are you mm -hmm. even? Yeah. You can't afford dinner and all of that. You need to not even go pick that up. So it's some people that's chasing that bad or wanting to have a bad girl, mm -hmm. or wanting to have that type of female. Like, Yeah. It's... I mean, I, me personally, I just see it as like when you be pressed to look and search and find, you will not find that shit because you itching too hard. Yeah. But when you chilling, that's when it, for me personally, when I don't look, that's when shit finds yeah, me. Yeah, Like, lying. yeah, like right now, I'm not looking because right. I don't even know, I don't know how long I'm going to be in Charlotte. I got this shit going on. I'm spending too much energy towards other shit. Right. That's how people be like, you ain't looking for no joint. I'm like, no. And I hope she don't find me. But with that being said, I'm chilling and all that. If something find me, I'm fucked. Right. Because if I'm head over heels, then I, I can't Yeah, I'm shit. that same yeah, way, I'm, bro. I'm that's why I said like, how when Blueface was in that interview and he was like, but I love her. I'm that type. They're going to be like, come open hood rich. <laughs> but I love her. Though, like that's why I don't even want to get myself into that, bro. I'm tender, bad. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm bad with it, bro. Yeah, I fall in both. love too. I don't, I'm, I'm tender, so I just try to. And I don't, I know I already know. I like I say, I ain't got the time. So yeah, I'm gonna get. I get cut off easy because I, ain't, I ain't got time to go on dates or none of it. Yeah, they yeah. cut me off fast. We'll, we'll see. I mean, that's at least you know your morals because a lot of people sink by doing that. Like. Yeah. 
not spending, I saw something earlier, like just not spending enough time on what you need to apply your time for. Like when dudes have girlfriends or wives that, especially like entrepreneurs and the girlfriends or wives be like, you got, you spending too much time with your business, not enough time with me. It's like, yo, you have a decision to make. Right. Yeah. Cause if you, if you keep spending the time with your business or whatnot, we know how that usually turns out. Right. And if you want to be like, all right, fuck the business. Let me spend time with her. Right. Then your duck is going to slim down yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Right. That's how, I, that's how I lost. I had a relationship for five years and when. She said, like, you ain't taking care of the house. Only thing that made me realize that I was more focused on my business and in the house is my dog. When I went and seen my dog, bro, he had so many fleas and tears. Mm. Like, I had kind of forgot. It's like yeah. I was so, you know what I'm saying, trying to get this right that I yeah. did forget about her and the house. It was like, I ain't care about her. No way. She mm. was, baby, my dog, I had, that's what made me, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, different. all right, yeah. yeah. That shit had me crying and everything. Oh, like, it's man. no way that I let this. You know what I'm saying? Get this yeah, bag. Like, yeah. So that's the only thing that made me realize, like, yeah. I'm so how'd you deep. find the fine line in that situation? I'm in my business. You see, mm -hmm. I got four of them and I ain't got no girls. So I'd mm -hmm. rather be into that. Like, this was my dream. This is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And if somebody can't understand that, if, I want you to have a dream too so you will understand. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody that working to towards it. The, you ain't even got to want the same things that I want. But if you got a dream too or something you working towards, mm -hmm. You gonna level and understand that I'm going over here to work way more than the girl that's ain't got, you know what I'm saying, nothing going on. So that's so, why I kind of fall in like, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. want a motherfucker that like I got standards too. I ain't saying you gotta have a business or you know what I'm saying? Like So would you so like is it like a preference since you want someone that kind of nah, understand I don't, your mindset I don't got between no preference I'm an a, entrepreneur and a chick with a nine to five? Yeah, I'm a I'm a, I don't know. Cause I've been kind of like, I feel like now I've been like saying in my mind, like, Cause it's like if I don't know, it depends on how well I like a person too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause if I'm if I like you, then I might, you know what I'm saying, deal with whatever it come with. Like I ain't mm -hmm. gonna be really too tripping, but yeah. I know how far I'm gonna take it. It ain't about to be like I ain't looking for no love or no relationship yeah. or nothing like that. Yeah. But I do in my mind a person that I would settle down with and that mm -hmm. I do want, I would prefer her to have a bit not have a business because she ain't, she can work a nine to five and still be you know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. shit, but I'm saying I want somebody that's going to understand. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That I'm going to work and I'm not going to not. All right. So you know it doesn't necessarily matter what she does. She just has to understand yeah. the entrepreneurial the mindset understand. that you're yeah, in. Yeah, because a lot of people that's not into the entrepreneur, not. It's like with music. You know what I'm saying? Somebody uh -huh. that's into music or doing music too, Yeah. you're going to understand that I got to go on tour, that I got to go and yeah. do this. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Whether somebody sense. that's not. Yeah. So it's like yeah, I, ain't, I ain't asking for you to have a business, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying... You gonna have to understand that my business. I ain't gonna say it come first, but it's like I could kind of, I kind of compare that? it to <laughs> kids. You know what I'm saying? Like with your like child. Uh -huh. Like I literally compare my business with your child. It's like when okay. you do hiring, I'm like, yeah. would you let anybody watch your child? So why would I let anybody just be in my cash? You know what I'm saying? Be behind my cash register. Right. It's I literally compare the same through the same way you feel about your kids. Mm -hmm. It's the same way I feel about my whole business. Like yeah. that's my child. I can't let it. You know what I'm saying? I can't I let it be out late for school. I can't do none of that. That's my it, everything. I, I never, I'll never put a chick above my dog, <laughs> Desi. Like if I bring a girl that I'm head over heels for and Desi ain't feeling her, she got hit the road. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I um, think you gotta rock with the dog. Yeah, like, I might. Yeah. Then I'd be like, I might put the dog out my room, but it's like I don't even want to do that. Yeah, you know it's, what I'm it's saying? Still, like, it's cause you in my dog house, basically, like you're a guest. You see what I'm saying? So y'all don't I hate a person that's like, is it dog? Da, da, da. Like it ain't sleeping in the bed, but he got his own. I don't want to yeah. make him not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause he's gonna be looking at me outside the door, like Right, right, right. <laughs> the greatest, um, one of the best like stories I've heard when it comes to like a relationship with a with a person and a dog. My uncle, this was before I got my dog. This is what really told me to get my dog, because it was either go to Miami. Or spend the money on a dog. But my grandfather had passed when I was about to go to Miami. So I was just like, all right, fucking get a dog. Yeah, appreciate it. So my uncle, he had a Doberman Pinscher. Loved this dog. Like he had it well trained and everything. And he had a wife. And his wife became to a point where she didn't like the dog. So she was like, gave him an ultimatum. Like, you have to get rid of the dogs. I think like growled at her one day. But she did something deserving of it, according to him. So she gave him an ultimatum, like, you have to get rid of the dog or, like, you know, we're going to have some serious issues. So he got rid of the dog. And he tells me that was the biggest mistake I ever made in my life. That's mm. what he told me, right? 
That's and, crazy. And they were married for a year. She's like, man, that was the biggest regret of my life. So right then and there, I was like, all right, I got to get could have been his out. Because mm-hmm. I was trying to find an out. And that could have <laughs> been his out right there. Like, Well, he didn't want an out at the time. Right, because he was he was really yeah yeah because he stuck it in, but I'm together. saying it, like yeah. that could have been like I yeah, say God oh, that would have been a great out. Oh, that yeah, could have yeah, been yeah. his out right there, like yeah. all right, the dog. Yeah, right, right, and, like, right. Like she had no choice but to leave because that's yeah. what, you know that's what, and I bet she probably would have thought about that and stayed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Me personally, even if I didn't want to leave, dog. yeah, even if I didn't want to leave, I would have, I would have, man, I would have played it cool. Like all right, that would have been hard. I would have took the dog to my cousin's house or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just bring him over here for a while, but I'm like get rid of my dog. Mm-hmm. Like something that I'm attached to. Yeah. And mine, I, mine is five now. I remember getting her little, she looked like a little naked mole rat when I right. first got her. Those things look crazy as puppies because their ears are down, their face is long, and their stomach all big and shit. I'm like, damn, she five. So, like, every hair in there, it's crazy to think like this. But every hair, I'm like, damn, like, who knows? It may only be able to be with her for like another five to seven years. Yeah. Like, if she were to go now, I'd be fucked up. Yeah, I can dog imagine died. five, seven years. Yeah, my dog died. I got. Um, I had him for like seven years. His name was mm. Duce, and he died because he had a um, Too he had ate a um, a corn on the car. Really? Literally. Did he like choke on it or did it like nah, fuck it, up his it insides? Was just literally, it was just literally sitting in his intestines oh, and it rotted. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I paid eight. You know how to, I took him to the vet. Took him to the overnight vet first. So that was mm. about. I probably paid about ten thousand dollars to save this dog life, and man. it died in surgery. Oh, and they they man. put the sympathy on me to get the surgery. Right. And you know what I'm saying? Like you know, the, you know, get yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think I I had it like it was. So I had to go to the bank and everything to even get the money. Yeah. Had the money on me, nothing. I wasn't even in town. I was in like Winston or something. Mm. So they had me go to some special doctor. So. You know, in my mind, I'm like, dang, should I pay for this surgery or should I, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know how we is about our dogs. So yeah. I paid for the surgery. And I I was sitting at the house and it's like, I went back home to come to the shop. And I'm explaining to my brother what's going on and everything. And I'm like, it's like I knew that that dog wasn't going to make it. It's like I hate, mm-hmm. it wasn't even about the money, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's like, damn, I did. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When I picked him up and still had a bill yeah. after my dog had died. Yeah, that's tough. <sighs> Crush, but they they cremated them and everything. I got them at the house and everything. But he was a pit. Yep, yeah. a blue pit. Oh, that hurt man. me bad. I ain't come outside for like at least a week, bro. Yeah, Even my tough. family was like, "Is she okay?" Yeah, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's they tough, know, man. bro. Like I've been, my mama always had dogs growing up, and I know I probably never had kids. So dogs, bro, like mm-hmm. I gotta have at least one. It's like you gonna buy another dog. I got another dog. What's I got a dog. Now? I got a bulldog. So I don't want another dog. Like I already got mm-hmm. him. So I'm really a straight. Frenchie. No, nah, he a uh, British bulldog. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, OG shit. Yeah. Um, real quick, just to rewind for a second. So you were saying how you're focused on your business. You're mm-hmm. not really thinking of like a partner right now. At least not serious. Right. What about a business partner? Like, have you ever like put in any thought into that? Like, maybe like a, a a chick like you into, and like you're like, okay, I won't have enough time to separate. But what if I bring her on to the team? It's like a business partner. Have you ever tried anything like that? They say don't mix business with pleasure, but you nah, know. I ain't I ain't never tried nothing like that. Yeah, but would you? Yeah, yeah, yep. I got somebody in mind too. Okay. Yeah, I would. I, I would. I would. I would do that. Yeah. That's if she was. She got to be down for it though. But yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm more of an open person. Like whatever you with, I'm kind of with type mm-hmm. thing. So if that's what it's on. Then we on some just bed. But I know it would be hard for it to be just business, especially with me. Mm-hmm. Like I can't speak for nobody else. Yeah. But. Oh, you said it was hard to be just business. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it would have to be, be put, laid out on the hard. table. If it's somebody like, that I like, it would have yeah, to be somebody yeah, that yeah, I kind of yeah, really yeah. ain't that interested in. Yeah. Somebody I, that I like. I'm talking like serious, like relationship around, type shit. Yeah. yeah not just like. Be, yeah, it's gonna yeah, yeah. be hard, yeah, bro. Like yeah. I know me, bro. That's gonna be hard. Yeah. I'm gonna be trying. Like if it's somebody I like, I'm gonna be trying, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be mad if I see them with somebody else type yeah. thing. Like it's just business. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm saying like relationship type. Like, would you like? Do the whole relationship yeah. business with partner a person? Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah, I would love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. That would hell yeah, that would excite me. You know, that mm-hmm. would give me something to look forward to, yeah. give me something to talk on about on both like, sides of the table. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Like especially somebody that because I always done dated kind of younger than me. I ain't kind of dated nobody like really like older than me. So mm-hmm. somebody that's coming in, like I feel like that's what I needed. Somebody that's coming mm-hmm. in, like look, we about to do this, yeah. this, 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 and this. Yeah, this side's about to get done. Put your money right here. I'm gonna put my money I'm like, yeah, hey, I would be what? I would be down. Like, yeah. that would excite me because motherfuckers that I've 
them with ain't you know what I'm saying? They, they had a mentality. Get. Hell yeah, they mm-hmm. looking to grab. Yeah, they some snatchers, <laughs> snatchers and runners. So they we ain't even trying here. to. If I find somebody I can build with, I'm gonna build a foundation like mm-hmm. that'll be. Yeah, that's goals right there. Yeah, I swear, definitely is. Probably happen sooner than later. Um, a lot of people, so like especially like today. It's like real popular to be an entrepreneur today. Right. Right. No one wants to work. Like social media has something to do with that. Right. A large part to do with that. Who are we kidding? Um, would you say like that's the smart route? Or do you think everyone is like cut out for that? Mm-mm. Can anybody just do it? Mm-mm. Why not? Yeah, we already got a bad rep as it is. Like a lot of people don't support black pe- black businesses because of black businesses and mm. the half service they get, the attitude that they have. It's like if you're not really like I didn't really change my whole, you know what I'm saying? When, when I come, when you come into my shop, mm-hmm. hey, how you doing? So like I turn into a whole nother person. Mm-hmm. And I love that for me. Like I'm not, that's what you should do for your business. Yeah. You got to be all in or not. So the people that's not all in give us that bad rep mm-hmm. and kind of that's, that's, we got to make up or work extra hard to get and make yeah. up for the people that's done kind of already. You know what I'm saying? Messed it up for us. They just got a little money and wanted to start a business or seen their cousin do it and want to start a business and kind of really wasn't into it. So you out here half cutting grass. So they don't want to mm-hmm. hire no more black people because the last black person half yeah. cut that grass. Like, we got to make up for the people that's half doing and not really showing up or doing right. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. it make it really harder for us because every black business ain't bullshit. Every black business ain't. You know what I'm saying? They right. don't ain't gonna cuss you out or make you feel uncomfortable. Like it's some of us out here. It might be a small bunch, but it's some of us out here that take that. You know, they take it serious and yeah. take their business serious. For sure. So it's, I don't. I don't. I know for a fact it's not for everybody. Yeah. Like, I done dealt with some people that I know for a fact it's like this ain't for you. Like mm-hmm. honestly, yeah. like, I know you're not built for it. And a lot yeah. of people come and they go, but it's like. You can tell who really built for it and who ain't because you really have to change. If you ain't willing to make that change, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna last. It's like these people is really bringing you their money. Mm-hmm. So if you think for a second that you don't have to kiss ass, are you crazy? You you crazy? I'm sorry, you're crazy. What do you think? Because at a certain level, you have to like mm-hmm. not saying you have to get on your hands and knees and beg, but. If you a person that kind of got an attitude, you got to change that. You got to know you have to change that. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't be stuck in your ways. Like, nah, you coming to shop with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you nah, know how some yeah, people is? Like, yeah, nah, they the, had that little the custom, attitude. The like, customer services. Yeah, they kind of lack that. And that's yeah. what black people get. That's why they don't want to come shop with a black mm-hmm. You know how some people is? Like, I ain't, I'm not, you know how they said yeah. too. Like, I'm not, I wouldn't dare shop at another black, but after what happened with them, we get all get a bad rep. That's why people, me personally, when the whole people say which is more important, customer service or marketing, and I'm going to get your take on it. Me personally, I think customer service rules marketing because that leads to marketing. Because just how you said, like, black businesses may have like a rep of not, you know, being or being a certain type of way. Right. That's marketing coming from the customer service. Right. right? But at the same time, people say if you don't have a if you have a, a product with no marketing, then you don't have a product. Right. But still the customer service is gonna lead to people yeah, spreading way, the word yeah, of mouth. It, it word of mouth is still existing. Yeah, people it has think cause to be Yeah, people think cause social media like everything's about oh marketing promo. Nah, Look people still reviews. do word of mouth. People still read reviews and yeah. all of that. So oh, yeah. it's like it's 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 real. If you out mm-hmm. here you know, doing bad business, cussing people out, talking people crazy. You think they ain't going to tell that to such and such? They ain't going to make a post about you? That's the fastest, quickest way to get a lot of comments now. Sure. To bash somebody and da 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 So you got to make sure that you don't kind of fall into that era. Like, like I say, you ain't saying you got to kiss ass, but you kind of got to, you know, yeah. be a little extra nice, go a little extra mad. Like, mm-hmm. some people going to have that attitude or have a little bad day. Don't let that turn change your attitude. Yeah. When they hit me with that, I'm still, yes. You know, like I had one dude walk in and he was like, you know, I was like, you know, I, we got clothes and everything. And he looked back and was like, and I wouldn't wear that shit. And mm-hmm. I ain't even, you know, me, me as me, I would have blanked. Like, bro, yeah. what you mean? It's my brand. You did yeah, like that. Up, but yeah. I didn't even say nothing. I was yeah. still, yeah, come on, you can get your yeah. cigars. So the nice I was, he was like, oh, this your brand. Mm-hmm. Dang, my bad. Bought yeah. a shirt and everything. Yeah. So if I would have cussed him out, if I would have came with that attitude that he had. 
It would have been a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would have been there arguing all night. Mm -hmm. And I ain't, it's no need for me to do that. Don't let somebody else's attitude change yours. Yeah. If you, you might can switch them around your energy. My energy is powerful. So if I got an attitude, everybody around me have an attitude. I see mm -hmm. that. So I have to literally force myself to be happy around my people so they don't be bad. Yeah. You know, they don't have an attitude. So don't give your customer that. If they giving it to you, don't even give that back to them. You literally can nah. change their attitude by like, all right, yes, yes, sir, yeah. yeah it's, it's nice to you is, and that's going to make them like, and they going to say something like, dang, I really was... That's gonna make them check them when they get in the car. Like, damn, yeah, it's about the attraction I, I feel of stupid energy. From like, you know, yeah. if you're even going that hard or that wasn't even that serious. Mm -hmm. Like, you gotta really check people. My vibe I'm already happy out the gate, so it's making you check it. When I hit you with that, dang, hey, how you doing? What's going on? It's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's gonna make you change yours. Yeah. I'm not even giving you that at the door. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You greeting people at the door with straight positive energy. You telling them what's going on. Dang, you smell good. Them shoes hard. Yeah. You compliment something they got going on off the rip. So they guard already down. They already in their pocket like I came to spend five off, but I'm about to spend ten. Just because I like the feel of it. It's a home feeling. She like my cologne. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to really go over just a little bit yeah, to make the you, people come you, back. You, you know a thing or two about sales because when I worked at Foot Locker, that was like my tactic. Like when people came in, I wouldn't come at them with the hard sales approach. Right. It was about, first off, displaying that good energy, like you said, right. having like a welcoming energy so they kind of put their guards down like, oh, here comes this sales salesperson right. as motherfucker. Let me... Let me get ready to tell them no quick. And you just talking to them regular, like you said, complimenting their shoes or whatnot. Mm -hmm. They put the guards down. And then you kind of, you know, talk about products that they may be interested in and, yep. and grabbing or whatnot. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. Um, so when it comes to a lot of people have clothing lines or uh, merch or whatever you may have it that try to sell clothes. And I see some that really take off and do well, just like Hood Rich. I see some that only last about a month or so. Mm -hmm. So what, like, what's the separating factors? Like, what causes, like, some clothing lines to not do as well? And what are, like, some tips you would say for them to succeed with it, you know, rather than it be here and gone by night? Stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Don't, I look at it the same as any, like, the same methods that I use in other things. I'm going to keep... Keep flipping. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like when you buy some tees, when I bought them 50 t-shirts, when I made that money, I bought equipment. When I made that money, I bought more stuff for my business. You see what I'm saying? It's what about type of equipment? I bought a heat presser and just a um I bought a heat presser, a cannon printer, and I bought a um I can't remember, like a US, I think it was US cutter, um, like a vinyl cutter machine. Mm -hmm. It was the three machines I had the printer so I can put the t-shirts, the pictures on the t-shirts. The cutter so I can put the words and then the presser so I can just press the stuff in a laptop. All that stuff cost me eight hundred dollars literally. Mm. So that's what I was making off of the cut off of the t shirts. Yeah. I had I had fifty t shirts. I probably used, you know, a little bit of my money too, but I bought that stuff. You gotta literally stay consistent. You gotta keep reinventing that re reinventing it yourself. Mm -hmm. If one shirt didn't make didn't work, drop it in another color. You see what I'm saying? Like just keep trying. Everything not gonna work, everything ain't gonna pop overnight. Just because I sold them 50 t-shirts, it probably ain't them second t-shirts probably ain't sell that sell that fast, but mm -hmm. it didn't stop me from going. Yeah. And keep don't just stick to one thing. Like people will do t-shirts and they I, I sell t-shirts. Or they'll stick to hats and I do hats. You need a I, I like a whole brand. I like my logo on almost everything. You see what I'm saying? I want socks, hats, t-shirts, hoodies. Don't just stick it to just one niche or feel like, I mean, some people can yeah. and stay in your box until you can get there. Mm. But to make yourself a brand, to give yourself that, that you know what I'm saying? This is a real clothing brand. You got to have other pieces. You got to have accessories. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Really think outside the box and follow trends. If it's something going on, it's a certain color going on. Like I feel like this summer, this chocolate, I mean, it's one of the chocolate fall. That's going to be a good color. So, you know, the tan, I feel like the tan chocolate going to be a hit this whole Fall something, you're gonna see a lot of brands. It's free game. And camo too. Camo gonna be good mm -hmm. too. You see Abby Park did camo. A lot of the camo print, um, mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton just did that camo, like that dark camo. That's gonna be like, you know, it's always a color. Once something yeah. was lime green, everybody had on lime green. Mm -hmm. It's like every it's trend that you have to follow. You have to be ahead of yourself too. Like when I was in Atlanta, I was bringing stuff back to NC. I travel a lot, so 
put people on, don't be scared to put people on. If they don't like it, make them like it. They was calling stat pants gay when I first when I first dropped them. Now everybody wearing stat pants. Mm. I still got stat pants from when I first started two years ago because yeah. where I was in Atlanta, and that's what they was doing then. But North Carolina cousin really, we, you know, we really weren't on it yet. Yeah. But don't be scared to put them on. Don't be scared to still try. You know what I'm saying? Like everything going, everything ain't gonna pop. Don't be scared to give away free stuff. Don't be in your head like everybody's supposed to bottom game. I just dropped off some free stuff at the post office today. Mm -hmm. Like give, give it, give it away. If it ain't selling, give it away. The more people see it, the more people going the more they gonna rock with it, the more they gonna buy it. So don't just don't be scared. Like mm -hmm. you gotta start, you gotta start from somewhere, reinvent yourself and just keep staying consistent. You gonna pop one day. Brands be starting from 1989 and still be going so you gotta that's what i be looking forward to like the journey yeah. like i know hood rich is where it's set now but i imagine where it's at you know 10 20 years from now if i stick to it you just got to stick to it and stay consistent because this brand's been around and i look at you know certain brands they've been around forever they mm -hmm. don't fell off got four five yeah, yeah, owners yeah. like reinvent so you yourself like you said yeah, real quick i want to show off this shirt looking at it, it's definitely going to fit perfect since you were speaking on the uh you know um cross uh you know um, blessing people. This is definitely a blessing right here. The Hood Rich established 2016. So y'all can see this. This is going to fit me perfectly, actually. And it's in my favorite color black, as you can tell. So yes, yeah, sir. this is on point. I appreciate this. Oh yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah. Where can they find it? Uh, HoodRichX.com. It's mm -hmm. www.hoodrichx.com. That's our online website. If you're in the North Carolina area, Greensboro area, you can stop by the shop at 618 North English Street. We we'll get you Greensboro. a haircut, a cigar, a t-shirt. We gonna we got the best one stop shop in North Carolina. You can do it I mean, all. Yeah, in North Carolina. You can literally do it all. Yeah, you that gotta go hard. nowhere. <laughs> That's very inspirational. And That's get hard. you a plate. We be having food. We have air. You know, tell yeah. what you come to Hood Rich and get. Oh, so you're gonna spend I'm the whole day there. You. Yeah, yeah. You I'm literally you might never leave. We yeah. got people that's been came one time and just yeah. ain't nothing. Vibing you know the whole day. Saying? Yeah, because yep. you know, I mean, you know people are gonna spend all day at a uh, whether it's beauty salon or hair shop, regard uh right. barbershop regardless. Yeah. Then the smoke shop too. Do you have like uh hookah and whatnot? Yeah, we got everything. Oh shit. Anything you could think of on the ten dollars, I got it. <laughs> yeah. That's how I think. Like yeah. there's something I could sell on the ten dollars. I'm gonna get it because I'm in that neighborhood, you know. Is it like a lounge type thing for the hookah, or is it you just? No, nah, it's, it's just, just a hookah, but it's okay. like we so chill, bro. The vibe is so chill. People just come. We Being got a couple chairs. They yeah, just post up. Yeah, it's a vibe, bro. Like yeah. I don't. It's you know, it's that home feeling. It's that. Mm -hmm. I asked somebody the other day. This guy that's um he worked at Request. He came up there and was chilling with us. And I'm like, bro, you know, cause. It's first, it ain't gonna say it's first time, but it's like he probably wouldn't be chilling the way he's chilling, you know what I'm saying? In yeah. the hood that he's chilling in. So I'm like, bro, how you feel? You good? Like, like, I feel like I'm at home. Yeah. It's just that good feeling that you just wanna stick around. You don't even feel like rushing back home, you know? Right. They chilling, good conversation. You just wanna chill. So yeah. it make you, it, we turn into a lounge by the time, by the end of the night, cause so many people done pulled up and ain't went home. Yeah. 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 Swell. You can't got nowhere to go. They gonna come right there to the shop and sit. Cause yeah. It's that type of area, like, That's tough. and you safe, you good. You mm -hmm. people be out there sleep, mm -hmm. all types. I ain't had nowhere to go, so I slept right here in the car. They yeah. parked their car there. I ain't know about it. like I had nowhere to park my car, so I parked in the back of hood. Really. Yeah, it's that type of environment. Like you know, you good. You know, you safe up there. Yeah, it sounds. Uh, it kind of has parallels to the whole, um, like. Uh, the Slauson Corner, that Nip Bar yeah. with the stores, the different stores and whatnot. Um, I see parallels with that. And that's just, it just sounds like, or it is just foundations and in, in like generational wealth, how they talk about. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, you said 10, 20 years from now, you picture Hood Rich being this. Let me ask you, let's say, let's say five years from mm -hmm. now. Um, what do you see Hood Rich being? Um, I wanna I wanna keep Hood Rich. But you know how like it always be like like you got let me see how can I say like it always be like not two brands but a company will have two brands. They'll have a brand that's more upscale, mm -hmm. that they sell pieces that's, you know, twenty thousand dollars or you know, like top pieces yeah. to five hundred dollars, whatever, then they got yeah. the brand like like they got fear of God, but they got essentials. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Essential is more sweatsuits, you know what I'm saying? More like cheaper. Fear yeah. of God. That's more dressy, casual. So that's my goal. My goal is to start a more casual, you know what I'm saying, brand that people that I know in Atlanta will, will kind of wear. You know, like my yeah. Atlanta crowd, them type of friends. Like, yeah. They want to wear, you know, they kind of more like Louis Vuitton or, you know, like a more upscale brand. I kind of want that brand, but still keep hood rich for my people that want to spend $20 for a T-shirt. 
Do you, you know, know what saying? the name of the other one would be? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and I don't want to say a say a name. Like I don't. It's something I gotta think about. I don't yeah, want it to yeah. be nothing with who it rich though. I yeah, kind of want to be a whole nother, oh, yeah, you know, you. a whole nother entity by itself. But yeah. I want it to be. I want to have an upscale brand. I want to still keep who it rich, but still have that upscale brand. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough, man. Um, I saw you. Do you have hood rich like tatted on you? Yeah, Did I got I it on my arm right now. Okay, here. I thought I saw that. Yeah, that's the uh, first. That was the very first. I changed my logos every collection. Okay. So I don't try to keep the same. So that's that was that was the that, that was the me. baby. That was the foundation yeah, yeah, one. This is yeah, this the very yeah. first one. I got it a couple times. So I got it right here. This yeah. is my logo, rich kids. So I got it a couple times. Yeah, you got it for real. Yeah. Did the neck tats hurt? Yes, definitely. I got this when I was 18. Yeah. So well, you went hard. Yeah. I mm. suppose it got it on the side of my neck. And they was mm. like, you should put it right here. Yeah. Oh, I let people talk me. I ain't gonna say I let people talk me into stuff, but that day I got yeah, it, 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 it can be an influence sometimes. Yeah, they yeah. put it on my neck when I seen them, like you know, like yeah, like Mexican style. They was mm -hmm. it was just all types of you yeah. know stuff going yeah. on. So I'm like, yeah, it was a lot of people there that day too. They literally stood over me while I was getting it, so mm -hmm. I couldn't cry. None of yeah. had to act all tough. <laughs> you had to eat that shit. Yeah. Ooh. Then he let me see it and was like, I gotta finish and go through that. I'm like, she was crazy. Yeah. I put that shirt on and left. Like, yeah. He still. Got needle in his hand trying to trying to shade something yeah. in right here. I'm like, bro, you was crazy. Yeah, was you, you shouldn't even let me you, get was up. You sweating and shit. What? Yeah, bro, I about died in there. Yeah, like I never forget that whole the smell, everything in oh, there. Yeah. Like bro, I was in the back of a club. Oh yeah, literally. They, yeah, they like, do that up there. They got they got tattoos and you know tattoos and booze, right? You yeah. get tatted in there. Yeah, like it was something that like that. Like I ain't my, seen that my, shit, so I came out here. I told you, my mom owned the restaurant, mm -hmm. so inside of the restaurant, like same little thing, lounge people pull. Mm -hmm. We knew the guys that owned the, the club right in the back of mm -hmm. the restaurant. Okay. So um when like before before they opened up, it was a guy that he was one of the owners. It was like two or three owners that owned it. But one of the guys he done tattoos for so mm -hmm. you know he'd be back there doing tattoos. He done the stars on my arm. Yeah. So I just be back there just getting tatted. Like yeah. I don't know, just leave my mama shop and just go right yeah, there and right just let there. her, you know, do my tattoos. Do you got your ribs hit? Mm -mm. I don't got nothing just to my chest. So yeah. I gotta get. I want my legs. My next is my legs. I gotta. I want a hood. My legs. Hood legs. Tattoo well, my this legs. part of the leg surprisingly hurt. Everything else was cool, but this part, that bitch bit for real. And then I got like a portrait, so that shit. Yeah, was, but you know, that's the more strong with them bones. And that's, what, so I, that's and, what it is. It was it, right it's down there. It's tender. That bone. It's tender. Mm. But um, similar to yours, when I was eighteen, I was uh, I've been getting tatted since I was fourteen. But when I was eighteen, that's when I was able to actually go to a shop. Yeah. So I went and got two big ass roses going down my ribs <sighs> worst pain of my fucking life mm, they got that numbing Easily. shit now I'm trying yeah, to rock yeah, with yeah, that yeah yeah but see how, how you feel you would get the numbing yeah, shit yeah my I home my, my, my home girl Sherelle she just came home that's yeah. my artist too shout out to Sherelle she um she got a she got her first test she got it on her neck too she used numbing cream yep how she, she said it felt? She said it felt good for halfway through. This and then wears off. Yep. Yeah, see, but that I, is straight though. I can rock out for halfway. Half, I can take that pain. Man, I sit there once I, I get it. I go for cream. hours. You I can't, can't respect, respect the numbing cream. I want to try. I it try. Take, it takes away from the journey. Like the pain is part of the tattoo. But like, I want to feel the pain. If I could feel it a little later on, then I still <laughs> feel it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm gonna feel I, it once I, that tattoo done. That's yeah. when that bad boy gets to hurt. And then next morning when you. Uh, oh yeah, the next morning when your skin woo, tight. Yes, that's what I was saying. You do that little stretch, you nah, can get I got, that bad I got, boy I got, down. And I hate pain. I'm not saying it's like I like pain, but that's part of the journey. Like I need to. I can take that. Pain. Yeah, yeah, I need I, to I be. I can take that. Pain. Yeah. I mean, I was supposed to go with this girl out somewhere. <laughs> I never forget. She was hot. That's when I got this tattoo right here. And I'm like, mm. yeah. I don't know what he's supposed to be coming to do. And he had this tattoo on his leg. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I want that too. Yeah. And I done tell, I'm telling her like, yeah, I'll be ready. And she came in there and seen that dude doing that tattoo. She beat me and him up. Uh -huh. That was the crazy. And I had to start, say sorry for him. She throwing water on us. Oh, and shit. Like, bro, she, went, she was wilding out. But she went crazy. Yeah. She always done that shit though. Like I yeah. always, She always went crazy like yeah, that. But that, that day was embarrassing because it was in front of somebody. And it's like, dang, you really going to? Act like this in front of bro over the club. Like who wanna go to the club? I wanted to get tatted. I was in there getting tatted. Oh, I woulda picked, I I picked tatted over the yeah, club. Yeah, I was too. in there that's locked easy. in, and she like, you yeah. all, we all done. We coming. That's, that's an easy choice. Oh, she got mad. Yeah, she blanked out on us. I'm gonna get a neck tat once I leave my job. I'm getting a, I'm getting something on the side. I you don't already know say, what you want. Yeah, I ain't gonna say it though. But you already know what yeah, I'm getting. So it's gonna be like side, like behind the ear, going down like the side. You got anybody name? Name, I got too many fucking names. When well, I I'm first, I'm saying like girl, like girls. Nah, just my mother and my grandmother. Oh, okay, okay. I ain't got no like chick name. Nah, you? 
Nah, I got okay. I got people with this done got my name, but I ain't never been talking. You had people to get your people. name. Yeah, oh, they done done it on their own will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I ain't yeah. never been like. How many I've people never got, asked somebody to go? Get how many them. people got your name? Like four. Damn. I think four. I know it's more than three, but it's Good four. Lord, can what you got? But going I ain't, on I ain't never asked nobody <laughs> to get my name. Like two girls got it and to be mad at it. You know, to be like in kind, they got it on the same area, same spot too. So that was so they they, know, they got it out of spite. Yeah, so like they, of each other. So they knew, one knew the other one had yeah, it. She so had she, already had it. So she got she it. She got it in high. This when we was in high school, like the first ever girl I dated. Yeah. So she got it, and you know she wasn't her mama. She wasn't even supposed to get the tattoo. That's how young we was. Mm -hmm. I broke up with her, and I started dating this other girl, which was the girl who got the tattoo, who got my name. It was her girlfriend. So they started dating, and she got my name too in the same spot. So it's like a love triangle, yeah, basically. On, like we on, all on, three was on. all three was dating, and both of them went and got the you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she went and got the name. She had it first, but she went and got it too. Right. But they started dating too. So they yeah, both were sitting I'm, over I'm there dating to put with this my together. name. That's on a hell of a situation. It was. It was crazy. They was trying to make me mad, so they started dating. Wow. Yeah. While rocking the same tattoo. That's crazy as hell. Crazy. Nah, I, I don't have then the uh, other girl, that's the girl I was locked up with. Shout out to her too. She's real cool. I was locked up with her, and you know the jail thing. We I done forty five days. I wasn't even in that long, and it's like it was just I don't know somebody I was talking to, and she was cool. I never think it would have went, you know what I'm saying? That far. I'm thinking it's just jail. So after jail, I wasn't expecting uh, nothing like that. So one day, I didn't even know she had a tattoo. It's crazy. My brother got my, I got my brother named Shakir. Mm -hmm. So he gets my name, and he posted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And she posted her picture with her with hers. To, to show. <laughs> she done revealed. I ain't even seen the tattoo. She got it in jail or out? I know she got it while we was out. She got out probably like a month or two after I got out. Uh-huh. So where did she get it at on her body? I would same, same area. Everybody got the what? tattoo like right here. Like, yeah. like not on the area, but like right yeah. on the side, like yeah. on their hip type thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I found out she had a tattoo in a full blown relationship. So I'm trying to delete the picture. Oh, because oh, I'm with in else? Some, I'm oh, with somebody. Oh shit! Yeah, did the, that the, was did crazy. The, the, the shorty was with. Did she get? Nah, to the... yeah, she. We got. We end up. She got like my initials. Okay. Yeah, we was gonna get matching tattoos, but I end up. Uh, that's I convinced her to get my initials. Now, that's somebody I can say, but I didn't ask her. Like mm -hmm. it was more like a joke. Like, yeah. and I left. To yeah. go do something when I came back, she had it. She and I wasn't it. thinking it was like, you know, I just said it like, yeah, yeah you should get my name. I went, I didn't ask her like, hey, you should get my name tatted. That's me right. asking somebody to get my name tatted. Right. And she getting so I think she got her nipples pierced or something. It was something weird. I'm like, I was uh -huh. mad because she done pulled her titties out for this nigga. Yeah. Random nigga. Yeah. It's like that was weird. Uh -huh. I was a little pissed about that. So I'm like, damn, you should get my name tatted. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I said, you should get my initial. That's Let what I said. I said, yeah, you should get my initials, yeah. right? So I leave to go see somebody, and I came back. She was like, look. It's like, damn. She done got myself in. Yeah. <laughs> and she don't even know about none of the other girls. So it's like, damn, that shit crazy. Right, but a lot right. of that shit when we was kids, though, bro. Yeah, like, yeah man. That shit nah, crazy. But nah. I be thinking, I know all of them still got it. Like, one time I seen one girl, and she was like, look. I'm still like, had it. She ain't covered up or nothing. <laughs> My friends bust out loud. We was at a dinner in the club at like a mm. private dinner and she drunk. Mm. I can't my love you. Da, da, da. She like, look. So you know my friends like, mm. I'm like, bro, chill. What? <laughs> yeah. You got these he, joints head over heels for you. Nah, man. they they I can't even speak for nobody else but me. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, well, let me say this. If if anyone is considering getting someone tatted on them, my tat man told me this. Get it in red. Cause it's easier to cover up, but you also get it in red. Cause you'd be like, oh, is you know when you see red, oh, it, it symbolizes love. Da, da, da. So it's easy to spin it. You better get it in Chinese. <laughs> that's my that's my advice. You know what I'm saying? Get the I, name in Chinese. I like his advice, but this, I advise Chinese letters so you can say, hey, this means love. Uh, name, you know what I'm saying? Same time shit. It's the name. Same thing as John John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some Chinese shit on me. I'm actually in the process of removing. You ever had a tattoo removed? Uh-uh. That shit is painful. It is? It's yeah. probably worse than getting a tattoo. Yeah. But it's quicker, but it is worse. Well, what you getting? What, what, what would you this get? This shit right here. It's, and I've had like, yo, I had like probably like four- Why not just get it covered up? I am, but it was too dark at the time. Oh, okay. I had to lighten it up. So I think like two more joints and I should be good. Plus yeah, I got to get this touched up too. What they done. Well, you, it's the spot in Miami that be doing them. 
They got they got it out here. I first started in Maryland. You so you go to uh, it's actually like what the fuck? It's just some type of like uh, laser cosmetic surgery place, and it's a machine that they use that like they they use it for I think laser hair removal, but mm -hmm. they turn it up. And it like it pops all the little bubbles in the tattoo, and then it like burns, and you gotta heal it and go back like a month. Burn. That sound like that sound like it hurt. Yeah, it, it hurt, and it looks weird as fuck afterwards too. But it's not too bad, as long as it's something small. People be having big ass shits. Mm. I'm like, I know that Stuff bitch on biting. Their face. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. I know that bitch biting. Would you ever get a face tat? No. Yeah. Mm -mm, we ain't gonna do that. My mama wouldn't even allow that. Yeah. I got one of them mamas like she. Ain't... Yeah, she yeah. still thinks she, you know still yeah. might put the belt to, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, now my folks will turn up too. Yeah. Um. So before we get out of here, uh, you gave about 15, 20 minutes ago when I asked you know as far as the clothing brand or whatnot, you gave a great game on that. Appreciate it. You're someone that has many businesses, mm -hmm. and you've always had like this spirit and this drive or whatnot. For someone that may have it as well, but they just may be discouraged on actually starting for whatever reason, like what's just some last words you would give to someone who, or maybe they went through some type of entrepreneurial journey, the business got shut down or whatever may have you and they're discouraged. Like what's some just words you would give to that person that's going through that that uh, entrepreneurial journey and they came across a speed bump, so now they think it's time to, you know, maybe this ain't for me. Um, um... I don't know, cause you gotta you gotta love it. You gotta make sure it's your passion. You gotta make sure you find something that you're passionate about that you can make money off of. If it ain't nothing that you would really look forward to waking up to doing every day, then if it are you already tried and it don't work, then you know maybe try something else and come back to it later. But if you already in it or you thinking about getting into it, I would say just start and don't worry about how to start or, or how you started or what you started with or mm -hmm. how somebody else got theirs just start because if you don't start or you don't ever take that leaf out on faith you ain't gonna never know what happened if i never spent that too if she would have said 225 i'd have been like 225 mm -hmm. i'm gonna go buy these shoes it's about to come out yeah and you know what i'm saying i would never be where i'm at right now if i never would have held on because if, if you started and you thinking about quitting you way farther than making it than you is than when you started. So you might as well hold on. You might as well just stick it out for one more day. And I always say go to sleep. If you're going through something and you feel like quit, go to sleep or smoke a little if you smoke, smoke, and just think about it after you smoke. Because you probably ain't going to have that same that same feel for it. But I always sleep stuff off. Because the way I feel when I wake up, I probably ain't even going to remember whatever I was mad about mm -hmm. or what got me down. But I always, I always go on YouTube and just look at other people like journeys and like Google other businesses. Like a whole, I forget the page, but it just break down. You know what happened to Subway and how Subway got mm -hmm. here and how Subway lost it and got it back. Yeah. I, I love stories like that that kind of just keep me motivated because everybody hits their point. I'm talking about the biggest of the business businesses that had to sell this or bar this. People literally, they, they say you live off of debt. You see what I'm saying? So if you got something going on, just bar from here and take from there and mm -hmm. put it there. Like you got to continue just try to find your way around it and navigate. But you got to be a passion. If it ain't something that you're passionate about, then it kind of ain't going to work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I yeah. always tell people to find something that you are literally passionate about. Don't find nothing that you see somebody else doing. Don't look at nobody that you see doing the same thing that you doing. Get off their page. Just focus on you. Focus on you marketing. Focus on your content or whatever mm -hmm. and just try to master that. And find somebody that you like and copy them. If somebody that you see in the same game as you, it's no thing to be a copycat. If I mm -hmm. see a content video that I like, I'm going to recopy that and do the same thing and put my own spin on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Everything is so resembled that's a good, off of yeah, something. Yeah, it's yeah. no problem to, you know, I ain't saying, you know, be a, be a, be a stealing, stealing. Yeah. But don't be, don't be scared to grab and get motivation from other people. But yeah. just don't get caught up in watching what they're doing. You right. know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. always good to find that one business that you love and want to be just like mm -hmm. and copy, especially if they're successful and try to copy the things that they yeah. did to get successful. Yeah, don't don't reinvent the wheel. What works yeah. for them? What works the for them, yeah. yeah. Just try yeah. to, you know, just try to find what works for you. But, you know, just hold on because if, if I wouldn't even be sitting here or, yeah, here, here today if I didn't just keep going. Like, I'd yeah. go to sleep, I'd be mad, I'd wake up in the morning, but... I, I love it. So I get up out of that bed extra early to make sure yeah. I'm on time. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's something that I'm passionate about. Yeah. So I always tell people to find if it's not nothing you're passionate about, you ain't going to want to 
continue to go and you're going to keep giving up. You know what I'm right, saying? If you, right. you keep giving up, you probably ain't passionate. Yeah. I like that go to sleep advice. That is true I as swear. hell. I was just thinking <laughs> that the other day. Like a quick nap. Like if you frustrated or whatever, it's quick nap, you will you. literally There's wake up a whole other stuff that people might not, but yeah. I promise you, just try it. If you hit that little spot and if yeah. you can... You know what I'm saying? Take that little 30 mm-hmm. minutes, whatever, to just snap yeah. it off. I yeah. promise you it's going to make a difference. Yeah, walks too. I like walks. Yep. Like outside, nature kind of is a natural healer as well. Well, Kim, you came by and dropped some literal gems um, as far as just the entrepreneur world, the clothing line world. Uh, blessed me with a Hood Rich t-shirt. Thank you again for that. It's going to fit me perfect. Um, Appreciate you. So, uh, you know... Where can where all can people find you? I know you have a few businesses, like shout out your IG, you know what I mean, your business pages and whatnot. How can people be keep updated with what you got going on? Um, I'm on Instagram. You can follow me at Hood Rich I am on Instagram and all of my pay I ain't gonna read out all the pages, yeah. but all of my pages is in my bio. My address is in my bio. So that's if you go straight to that Hood Rich I am page, mm-hmm. it'll show you all the businesses and kinda a little bit of everything I got going on. We have a YouTube channel as well, so that'll give you a more insight on day to day and what I kinda got, how I run the businesses and you know the ups and downs and stuff. Okay. But my online website is www.hoodrichx.com and that's how you can go in there and get you some clothes. But like I say, we got a couple different businesses. We got a black truck service. If you need a ride, you can book our black truck services. We got the salon, we got the clothing, and we got the smoke shop. So if you're ever in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, stop by 68 North, 618 North English Street. We got lottery chips, everything. If you don't even smoke, you can still stop by and get you a lottery ticket. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some chips, some drinks, get you a hat cut, a hat style. You know, whatever, whatever we got a good one stop shop and whatever we'll drop you, you off wherever you need to go. Yeah. So you just get dropped off to us or come to us and we got you. Yeah, straight like that. Whatever the fuck you need. <laughs> um everyone tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your respective podcast platform, Google Podcasts, Apple, Spotify, iHeart. Amazon, truly thank y'all for tuning in. I ask that you like, subscribe, share it out, and leave a comment. Give your honest feedback on the show. That helps continue to make the show better for you on the uh, next episode. And speaking of which, make sure that you hit subscribe so that you can be updated on each and every every other episode. Thanks to Kim again for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Hood Rich. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace.